I want to talk today about Sequoia, which has been described as being a cool OpenPGP library or cool OpenPGP implementation. And I'm Neil, and I work on this with Yosis and Kai since the fall of last year. So my talk is divided into three parts. It's the sort of introduction to Sequoia, what it is and why we're doing it, the motivation basically. Then I'm going to give you an architectural overview. I'm not going to show any code, but it's going to be more on the technical side. And then I'm going to describe the status quo and some future directions. So as I said, it's a new OpenPGP implementation. And the thing that most people immediately think is kind of cool or interesting is that it's in Rust. And the nice thing about Rust is that it's memory safe. And if you look at current implementations of OpenPGP, uh, the big ones are in C. So you have like GNU PG and you have NetPGP. Of course, Open Keychain is in Java, but that's more Android specific. So the motivation for doing this new implementation, why it, is the status quo not good enough, is, is based on our experience with GNU PG. So GNU PG, in our opinion, is kind of hard to modify, kind of hard to, uh, hard to improve it. It's stuck a little bit at a local optimum. And there are a few reasons for this. One of them is that the code and the API have grown organically over the past 21 years. And of course, it's expected that as you're, you're working on things, you accrue some technical debt. But the thing that makes it particularly difficult to modify GNU PG is the lack of unit tests and the tight component coupling. So when you do try to modify something, you have to have this really big global overview of the whole, whole code base. And even then, there's almost always something that you haven't thought about. Um, there's also talking to people who use, in particular, GNU PG, is there's an un, they're unsatisfied with GNU PG's API. So it's hard to program. And if we look at things like uh, eFail and SIG spoof, it's pretty clear that um, we, can, we think we can do better. Rust is memory safe. That's, that's super important uh, if you're going to do parsing, particularly if you're going to do it in a security sensitive context. And another thing that was a, a motivating factor is that GNU PG can't be used on iOS due to it being under the GPL, which is unfortunate, but the current state of the world. We have kind of two major goals, and I put the social here first because I think that's actually more important than the, the technical one. And the social goals are that we want to create an inclusive environment in our project. It should be free software, and our project is community-centered. Or at least we are trying to do that as best we can. We're doing the development in the open. We are doing our best to collaborate with other OpenPGP implementations. So before we even really started working on the implementation of Sequoia, we had a meeting this past fall and we invited several uh, people, so in particular Vincent uh, from Open Keychain and uh, Daniel who has been working on OpenPGP related things for more than a decade to come and design with us uh, Sequoia, sort of the, the major architectural points, and get their input and their experience working on something completely different from GNU PG. And we're also actively seeking out application developers to get their input on the type of API that they want to work with. What are their requirements? And those are the main drivers behind uh, Sequoia's API. So those are the social goals, but we also have technical goals. So one of the distinguishing things about Sequoia relative to GNU PG is that it's firstly a library, and then it's a command line interface. If you look at GNU PG, you can type in the commands on the command line, and it turns out that the command line is more powerful than the library GPG me. And in our opinion, this is a bit unfortunate because at some point a developer reaches, wants to do something and realizes that GPGME just doesn't offer that functionality. But it's possible to implement that functionality or realize that functionality from the command line. And so the developer shells out to GPG, creates all of this infrastructure, and then comes the question, well, why am I shelling out, why am I using this library if I've already built all this infrastructure to shell out to GPG once? And then this sort of recommended interface isn't used at all, so it's kind of a little bit of disaster. So we're taking a different approach. We're doing the library first, 
And then we have a command line tool and people can use it, but we encourage them to use the library. And we think that the ins it's incentivized such that the library will probably be used more often. As I said, we're community oriented and we're talking to people. And so one of our major goals is to develop an API that is, is friendly and easy to use. We have done something where we're providing two interfaces actually, kind of a low level API and a high level API. The idea behind the high level API is that you can do something like sign encrypt and you don't even have to know anything about OpenPGP. And then the low level API lets you do those few things that the high level API uh, doesn't provide because you have like a slightly specialized use case or you just need to do something a little bit different. And it's not one or the other, you can use both, they're complementary. We're trying very hard to do a loose coupling of components so that way it's easier to test. And in that vein, test, test, test is one of our, our mantras. And we already have several hundred tests and each test has, has a bunch of test vectors. So we're feeling pretty good about uh, how the code is, is coming together. Another major technical goal is that we want to support all modern platforms. So we're interested in supporting the Linux desktop, Windows, Mac, Android, and iOS. And if it happens to work on something like HPUX, that's kind of cool, but that's not our, our major focus. And we're not only trying to port Sequoia to these platforms or make sure it works there, we want to integrate tightly with the environment. And that means using any of the services that those platforms provide. So for instance, on iOS or on an iPhone, you have this trusted enclave, which you don't have on other platforms. And so even though that's only on iPhones, we're still going to try to make use of that. So I've given you some background about Sequoia, but who are we? Well, there's the three of us. We are former GNU PG developers. We worked between two or two and a half years at G10 Code, so directly on GNU PG and modified uh, GNU PG directly, so we're working on the code base. And since the fall of 2017, so not quite a year ago, we've been at PEP. And uh, PEP is our employer. They are the primary funder. And the uh, Wall Holland Stiftung, which is a, a German uh, foundation, has also provided some funding for our development. And uh, although PEP is developing commercial products, they also have this foundation side. And our mandate is then to provide an open PGP implementation for PEP, although that is what we're doing. Our mandate, firstly, is to provide an open PGP impl implementation for the community that is uh, the best for everyone. And so sometimes that means that we do things that are a little bit in conflict with uh, what PEP is doing. So for instance, we have some ideas about how we want to do multi-device support. And PEP also has those ideas but we're still going to implement them into OpenPGP because there are other cases for, for using OpenPGP that are legitimate. So PEP isn't trying to uh, push everyone out. Now, it's nice to have uh, funding from at least two organizations, but we're still primarily up, um, dependent on PEP. And so we're actively looking for funding from other places. That way there's some more security about the development and hopefully long-term Sequoia doesn't disappear for whatever reason. So now I want to transition to some more technical details. In particular, I want to take a look at how Sequoia is built. So at the, the bottom, which is of course the top in this picture, we have the OpenPGP library. And this is what's providing the low-level interface. There are two libraries or services that are built on top of this crate or library. There's the, the network service. So that's for instance, accessing key servers or doing something like WKD. And then there is the store, which is used for accessing and storing uh, public keys and private keys. And this is, a, is not provided by the low level interface. A low level, level interface works directly with the keys. So if you want to put the keys in your own database for whatever reason, that's completely possible. On top of these three things, we have the Sequoia library, which is a, a high level API. And this is what we expect most applications to use, either directly if they're a Rust application or via the FFI 
the foreign function interface if they're calling from, for instance, C or Python or something else. And we already have a fair amount of the CFFI done. And it's uh, really nice to work with. It's ergonomic. And so we're feeling pretty good about uh, how that's turning out. And we have similar hopes for other APIs. And So the OpenPGP crate is this, this low-level, unopinionated API. Now, of course, when you implement RFC 4880, there are some bits that, where you have to do some interpretation. So you inevitably introduce some kind of opinion. But the point is, is that we're trying to expose all of the bits of OpenPGP and doing so in a way that you can build any type of OpenPGP application on top. And this includes, for instance, uh, streaming support and streaming support means that if you have, say, a backup or an archive that is multi-gigabytes and you can't keep that in RAM, then somehow you still need to be able to kind of decrypt it on the fly. And streaming isn't easy because it results in things like e-fail. And so we've taken a lot of time to think about how we can introduce mechanisms to maybe not completely prevent something like e-fail from happening if you're using the streaming API, but at least make it a lot harder to exploit. Now, I said that we're gonna do all of RFC 4880, but we're not doing kind of the dangerous bits, the things that are just completely insane, like something like MD5 or IDEA. So those things are not supported. Can I interrupt? You can ask questions. Okay, great. Uh, what is exactly the list of uh, allowed selected ciphers? I mean, this is like, Two examples for blacklisting, but what are the ciphers that are supported? The ciphers that are supported, so we're doing AES, and uh, there's, I think we have triple desk currently on, and um, Blowfish, Camellia. Camellia. So I would say all the 64 uh, bit block size ciphers are okay. Um, Class 5 is pushing it, but okay. Triple Des is still supported. I'm not that happy with it. But it's not, uh, there's, there's no hard uh, decision yet. So it's, it's again the same as we discussed yesterday. I think we should de decide together on a set of no ciphers. No problem. Yeah, sure. We're, we'd be happy to talk about that. So, thinking about what type. Ciphers that should definitely be retired, even if the RFC isn't doing that. Now, this, this low-level API is intended for more advanced use cases of OpenPGP. So that means, for instance, maybe you want to add a signature to an existing message. You want to strip the encryption. You want to do re-encryption or some type of forensic or analysis. That's the intent of this library. And applications like MUAs are primarily, we hope, going to be using the higher-level API that I'm going to get to in a minute. So we have this store. The store is actually in two parts. It's SQLI based. On the one side, we have the store that's managing the, the public keys, and then we have another uh, thing that's doing the private keys. So the public key store doesn't look like a PGP key ring, as people have become used to using GNU PG, where you have this key-centric workflow. Instead, what we're trying to do is to introduce a uh, a person or identity centric workflow as people have become used to when using their contact list on their mobile phone. So if you want to contact someone, you go to your contact list and you say, ah, okay, send an email or send a, a signal message or, or whatever it is. So you have this kind of central thing, identity based. Whereas if you look at GNU PG, then it's, it's key based, it's key centric. And if you look something up by an ID, then you're actually searching through the whole database trying to find any keys that match that particular user ID. And the nice thing about this is that this is how, how people tend to think, right? I think of um, my mother not using her name, but I call her mom. And so on my contact list, her name is mom. And so if I'm in my email client and I type in to mom, then it's gonna find her email address. And in the same way, it should also find her open PGP key. And because different applications kind of have different ways of using things, but some applications are kind of grouped together, this mapping between labels, so mom for instance, and keys is kind of per domain. 
So we have a contact list. So when you're in your email program, you can find a particular person, but then you go into your Dropbox like Dropbox like program, and you have the, the same list of people uh, and sort of trust relationships. But if you drop down to the command line, you're thinking about installing software. All right, just because I've verified the key from somebody who works at the NSA, and I'm willing to um, to say yes, this is a good message. The signature is valid because I, I verified that person's key. It doesn't mean that I'm going to install software from that person. So we kind of have a different trust domain and different way of thinking about it. And so we have these different domains. And each domain has its own mapping from labels to keys. Nevertheless, the keys are shared across all of the domains. So that way, if updates come in, for instance, there's key rotation, new signatures, or new user IDs or whatever, those can all be shared between the different domains. And the public key store is actually doing this refreshing in the back, background, similar to parsimony, where uh, it uses a, a random timeout and then it fetches another key via Tor. Uh, this is more or less done. Uh, modulo the Tor support because the library that we're using uh, for doing SOX connections doesn't support authentication, which you need for Tor. But that's hopefully coming soon. So the private key store provides all of the private keys. And this is a, a separate thing from the library where we kind of do a, a fork exec type thing when possible. Uh, again, it's kind of platform specific. And it looks like a smart card. And by making it look like a smart card, it provides a, a uniform way of thinking about all different types of keys, whether that be a, a local key, a key that is stored on a different server and accessed via SSH, uh, a key that's on a smart card in a TPM or on the trusted enclave, whatever it is that you happen to be using. We take the position that uh, the password is, is optional, and if you want a password, then we're going to use one password for all of the local keys. And this is, again, a divergence from the way that GNU PG has been doing it. Um, we also have some ideas about how we're going to do um, automatic key rotation for forward secrecy, and this is a talk that Yus is going to give in a little while, and he'll get into all of the details. But kind of the most important thing is that it's mostly compatible with existing OpenPGP implementations, modulo some, some relatively minor, we think, modifications. And in order to do this, right, the way that forward secrecy works is that you throw away key material. And if you throw away key material, then you're no longer able to decrypt things that you have in the past. Well, how can we resolve this dilemma? Because this would be a fundamental shift in the way people think about using OpenPGP, where the email is stored on the server, and I still want to be able to decrypt it years later. We're going to introduce two sets of keys, or two sets of encryption keys, one for at rest data and one for transport. And it turns out that the OpenPGP specification already has provisions to support exactly this type of thing. So we have this Sequoia network, which is just a library. It's not a, a separate daemon. It's co-located with, uh, with the process that's using it. So normally the, the public key server, or the public key server, the public key store. And it's going to access the key servers and WKD and, and other things. Sequoia is this high-level API. It's easy to use, as I already said. And we try to provide sensible defaults as much as possible. And here, the API is really being driven by our discussions with different uh, application developers and other people who have experience in the OpenPGP world. And kind of the example API that you can think of is you have a, a function that generates a key using sensible defaults. So you don't have to specify very much, maybe the user ID and it'll just go ahead and generate you kind of a default, reasonable OpenPGP key. You can imagine having a couple different profiles, but in the end, as easy as possible, no ability to set, for instance, the number of bits for your RSA key, these sorts of things at this high-level API. Finally, we have the FFI, um, and we want to maintain directly upstream the most important language bindings, and a major goal here is to make sure that the interfaces that we provide are as idiomatic, idiomatic as possible. So the C bindings, they already exist. Uh, 
for the most part, they're pretty easy to use based on our own experience, and we're extremely happy the way that that is working out, and we're hopeful for, for other languages as well. So how do these services kind of relate to each other? We're using process separation for security as much as possible. Uh, that's not currently, that's partially implemented, and it works, for instance, on, on Linux, but of course we have to look at uh, other environments other environments in order to figure out the best way to do that. So for instance on the iPhone it's not really possible to create multiple processes as I understand it. And so we have two kind of daemons that are spawned by the applications themselves and rendezvousing is done via um, TCP on the local host and a cookie on the file system so we don't have to worry about Unix domain sockets and this also should work on Windows. So we have the public key store and the secret key store and the applications are talking to them and they share them. Um, if Sequoia somehow fails to contact a one of these shared services, it doesn't completely blow up, it will fall back to doing co-location and in this case, any of the synchronization that needs to be done for accessing keys and modifying the database is done via SQLite. Now, it's good that it still works, but of course it introduces additional overheads because the actual synchronization is being done on the file system. The IPC protocol that we're using is not something we've designed in-house. We're using Cap'n Proto, which is a relatively well-known uh, capability-based uh, IPC protocol, which is the successor to um, uh, Protobuf. Yeah. And uh, it's as REST-based as possible, so we try to avoid having to track context and build up sessions and these sorts of things, so you can just go ahead and fire and, and forget. So that's the Sequoia's architecture. Uh, I showed you a tiny bit of the interface, but no code, and I'd be happy to uh, talk about code with anybody who wants, but our website has a lot of documentation and on the, the API, including some examples, and we're also working on kind of a guidebook that describes the way that we envision our library being used so that way you can get started quickly. That's still at the initial stages, but as we get further along, of course we're going to update that. So what's the, the status quo and where are we going? So here, this I'm showing you the, the progress of kind of different things. A check mark means that we're, we're done, right? 90% at least. Uh, so that means we only have 90% left to do, or 90% of the time left. For the OpenPGP crate, the major things, of course, are, are parsing OpenPGP messages, serializing, encrypting, verifying signatures, decryption, um, gener generating signatures, and creating keys. And this is pretty much all, at least 90% done, except for the key generation stuff, and that is hopefully going to be done within the next few weeks. So we're looking really good on the low-level crate, and we're pleased with the way the implementation, the API, have come along. In terms of the stores, we have the, the public key store, and that's mostly done. You can use it. The high-level API supports accessing it. Uh, the private key store has not yet been implemented because we've only recently added all the support for, for dealing with private keys. Um, but there's a start there. Smart cards and these types of things, remote access, are planned for the future, and we haven't done any type of implementation work there. I mentioned before that you can do associated data for the um, for each of the labels inside of the uh, the public key store and although we have ideas of how to do that we haven't really implemented it yet. The parsimony functionality modulo, the Tor support is there. In terms of the network interface we already have key server support we haven't yet done WKD, and again, the, the Tor thing is an issue. On the higher level, Crate, we haven't done much work. So the high level API, we have some ideas about how it's going to look. And now that we're actually doing some work porting uh, applications to Sequoia, we have a better idea of how this API should look. And in the near future, I think we'll be implementing it and testing that out. In terms of the FFI, the C uh, FFI is the bits that are there work well, but there are still some pieces missing because we haven't been actively using it. And we've we started a, a Python FFI, but 
it's not yet committed. In terms of protocol work, one thing that we kind of hope to do in the future is this for secrecy stuff that I mentioned, multi-device, and actually doing some work on the open PCP specification. And those things we've done a lot of thinking about, but there's still a lot of work to do there. So what does the broader ecosystem around Sequoia currently look like? Well, we've talked to a lot of people, that was one of our goals, and there's a lot of interest from the community in integrating Sequoia into different projects. So at the, the MUA level, we have, for instance, uh, PEP and Enigmail and Delta Chat and Leap have all explicitly talked to us and said that we really want to at least experimentally implement Sequoia and see what it looks like compared to what we're currently using. One thing that we've done is Delta Chat. So Eustace actually did this yesterday. And within about eight hours, he had an API, but it was also kind of fixing a, a bunch of bugs that we found along the way because this was the first kind of major user of the C API. Nice. In terms of infrastructure, uh, yesterday Kai started on a, a new key server, which is a replacement for the uh, SKS key server software, uh, which is very hard to modify because it's written in a strange or camel dialect. Couvert is an SMTP proxy that does automatic encryption, and we've heard from several organizations that they'd really like to uh, see a port to Sequoia due to issues that they're having with the underlying OpenPGP implementation there. And the same thing goes for Schleuder, which is a, a mailing list re-encryption project. Uh, Daniel Gilmore, DKG, works for Debian. He does a lot of the OpenPGP stuff, including maintaining GNUPG and um, uh, key signature verification for, for packages and apt. And he came to us and he said that GPGV, which is used to verify the signatures on packages, has a number of inadequacies. Do you think that you could fix this in um, Sequoia? And we said, we'll give it a try. And we took a look and it turned out that in about 200 lines of code, you have this nice SQV implementation that does more or less what, what Daniel wants. So we're hopeful that in the next version of Debian, that SQV is going to be there. We've talked to some of the cargo developers, which is the packaging system used in the Rust ecosystem. And there's definitely interest in um, doing some sort of signature verification. And uh, we have some ideas, but we haven't kind of uh, followed those up yet because they're still, or at least at the time, were pieces missing from the Sequoia implementation. In terms of tooling, we have SQ Split, which is kind of a nice little functionality for pulling apart open PGP messages and something like PGP dump, which you can use to examine the messages. Um, I have an under construction sign there because the output isn't quite pretty enough. We've spoken with uh, the Intercept slash First Look Media, so Michael Lee, he does GPG Sync, and he would also, he's also very interested in using Sequoia, and we hope to help him. There's Git, the WGET developers have talked to us about integrating Sequoia. Uh, so there's a, a lot of interest from the ecosystem and we're trying our best to, to help people. And here I want to show you uh, the first, or one of the first messages that was sent from a Sequoia implementation of Delta Chat to another Delta Chat client. This is a screenshot from yesterday where, where just said hello from Sequoia. So Delta Chat is net PGP based. Um, NetPGP is this kind of incomplete OpenPGP implementation, and unfortunately there's no upstream development, so the motivation is large to try something else out. And when we looked at Delta Chat, we saw that it uses about 10 kind of OpenPGP type functions, and we've already done about half of that within just one day. And by we, I mean Eustace. So what's the, the release schedule? Uh, Hopefully this fall we're going to be able to have a more or less final version of SQV and OpenPGP, or at least maybe not final, but at least stable, something that people can actually use, but no promises, right? So in terms of features, we're almost complete, but we want to get more experience by porting at least five applications or six applications to OpenPGP, to the Open. In terms of further development, there's this high-level API, the smart card stuff and TPM stuff, uh, doing the system-specific protection mechanisms like process separation and uh, forward secrecy and multi-device support. So here's a, a, a Sequoia tree, large, old, stable, 
cars can drive through them, you can turn them to tunnels, they, uh, they don't move. And our version of Sequoia is a nice open PGP implementation in Rust as hopefully as stable as a big Sequoia tree. Uh, our focus is on, on user development or community, we're portable and uh, trying to highly integrate with the targeted environments. The low level API is already usable and you're welcome to join us on IRC, on our mailing list, or to contribute via GitLab. Thank you.